I mean, you, you know, you can't dictate, dictate to the culture its values. You can influence it through good behavior and examples and rational and, and, and loving, loving connection with the people that are close to you, but dictating it never works. And that kind of gets to the other question is like the conundrum that often I know many of us face probably on both sides is how do you, how do we bridge? How do we, like, I'll just give you an example. My mom, you know, she, she and I look at, she, she's just. I bet you voted for different she, candidates. We did. And, and how do we bridge those, how do we bridge those divides? You know, and because ultimately it's, you know, you love these people, you know, <laughs> you really do. And it, it's a confusing thing. Do you have any thoughts on that? Like, we have to learn how to disagree without being disagreeable. And the second thing, uh, in other words, what, what used to be is uh, 50 years ago in, uh, in politics and in a lot of areas, if somebody disagreed with you on something, on a policy or political things like that, it, they just disagreed with you, okay? Nobody was challenging, are you an American? Are you a patriot? Uh, are you a good person? Today, anything that's different is considered demonic. In other words, we demonize people. Uh, we, we, we dehumanize people and we, and, and the, the name calling, and I'll tell you where that came from. It came from the internet because it used to be people will say things on the internet, hiding behind a screen that they would never say to you in person. They don't have the courage to say that in person, but it's easy to sit in a screen in your pajamas and flow, throw flames at things. And the whole issue of social media has become a cesspool really for, uh, the worst element and they dominate and they yell the most and they, and no matter what you say, somebody's going to come back and, and hit it with an egg and then they hook you and they hook you. And all of a sudden you're being angry and you're getting mad and you're getting polarized and the world's getting more and more divided. The only way, listen, the only way we're ever going to have unity in America uh, or, or among Christians in the church, the only way we'll ever have unity is to learn to love diversity. And here's why, because God is the author of diversity. He gave us different skin colors, backgrounds. Uh, these are sovereignty factors. You didn't choose your parents. You didn't choose where you'd be born, when you would be born. You didn't choose your natural talents. God gave them to you. You didn't choose the talents you don't have. Most of the things in your life you have no control over. Uh, but the one thing you do have control over is how much you trust God. Now, in, 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 in getting along with each other, you don't have to agree. You don't have to see eye to eye to walk hand in hand. Uh, anybody who's married knows that. Okay. Okay. It, it, it's nonsense. Uh, today we're told, well, uh, if you don't accept my particular lifestyle, you don't agree with it, um, then you are phobic of me uh, or you don't love me. Well, that's nonsense, okay? I I'm not phobic of anybody, and, I don't, and I'm commanded to love everybody. I have to love everybody. They don't lo have to love me, but my Savior, Jesus Christ, says I have to love even my enemies. I don't have to agree with them, but I do have to love them, and I I'm commanded to treat everyone with dignity, even people who totally don't treat me with dignity. Uh, if I claim to be a follower of Jesus, then I'm supposed to do that of, of bless those who curse you, pray for those who persecute you, uh, 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 help those who mis, mis, uh, uh, use you and stuff like that. In other words, it's returning good uh, for evil. So we have to learn to love diversity. Different doesn't mean uh, demonic. It doesn't mean, well, it's bad. Uh, if we took four people out, put them on four corners of a, of an intersection and there's an accident, it would be seen four different ways. And this witness would say, here's what I saw. And this would say, here's what I saw. Here's what I saw. It's not that, that it, it's just human nature that we see it different ways because of our filters of, of how we grew up. I've been wanting to look to the church to help bring unity back to America. Um, and, and it's, it has been a lot of challenges and that includes the social media realities and the 
Uh, and you just kind of throw up your hands and, and you get confused. And we do the best we can do with a furring character where we can find it. And one of the things that you taught me, you know, when you created the peace plan, which is a, a plan, you know, you find a man of peace or a woman of peace. And that's how you engage the world. You know? Right. Um, and, th and they didn't have to be a Christian at the point either. They were just open and, and willing to work with you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how you make the changes. You know, uh, that's how you make, make, make things a little better. And there's a verse in the Bible. It's in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. And it gives qualifications for leaders. And it says this, uh, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you, consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Okay. Remember your leaders spoke the word of God. Do you consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith? Now this passage gives us three characteristics of good leaders. They have a message worth remembering. They have a lifestyle worth considering, and they have a faith worth imitating. That's the kind of leaders we need today. A message worth remembering. It's not a, it's not a gotcha message. You know, it's not a put down message. It's not a slur. Uh, demeaning, uh, dehumanizing message. They have a message worth remembering. Evidently, the, 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 a leader says something that's worth listening to. They have a lifestyle worth considering. Consider the outcome of their way of life. Does their walk match their talk? Uh, does their life match what they say they are? Yeah. And then they have, a faith, they have a faith worth imitating. And that means that they're willing to take risks uh, for something greater than themselves. For information about investing in character-led companies, please visit www.rocinvestments.com and join the growing number of investors choosing to make character a priority when investing their money.